This is Into Math, third grade, lesson 4.1. Understand the identity and zero properties of multiplication. I can use the identity property and zero property of multiplication as strategies to multiply with one and zero. Please gather your workbook and a pencil and turn to page 84 under Build Understanding, Problem 1. Kay makes a fruit basket. She puts four oranges in the basket. How many oranges does Kay put in the basket? Show the number of oranges in the basket. Write a multiplication equation for the problem. So if you would like to try this on your own, you may pause the video and come back. Otherwise, you can follow along with me. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create a basket and we're going to put four oranges inside the basket. Then we're going to write the multiplication equation. There is one basket and four oranges in that basket. So we have one times four, which makes four. Let's take a look at part A. Kay decides to put one more orange in the basket. Show how many oranges are now in the basket. So we're going to create a new basket and now we're going to add one more, which would be five, into the basket. This creates a new multiplication equation. There's one basket, but now there are five oranges, which makes a total of five oranges. Part B, K decides to put one more orange in the basket. Show how many oranges are now in the basket. Again, we will create a basket and add six oranges, so there's one basket and there are six oranges. So there are a total of six oranges altogether. Part C, what pattern do you see when you multiply with one as a factor? Well, when we take a look at the pattern, we have one times a number and we get that same number. So whatever one times something like a five, we're going to get the answer of five. I'm noticing that this factor six is actually the product six when it's multiplied with one. And that's the connect to vocabulary for today. The identity property states that the product of any number and one is that number. And they give some examples here and you'll notice that the order doesn't matter. Three times one makes three and one times four makes four. So we can explain our thinking by writing the product is always the same as the other factor. Part D, continue the pattern. Write the next three multiplication equations. The next three multiplication equations would be one times seven, which would be seven, one times eight, which would give us the product of eight, and one times nine, which would give us the product of nine. Turn to the next page, page 85. Problem two, Wes packs four lunch bags. He forgets to pack cereal bar in each bag. How many cereal bars does Wes pack in the bags? There is a picture here with the lunch bags and they do not have any cereal bars inside because Wes forgot to pack them. Part A says, what multiplication equation can you write to find the total number of cereal bars? If you'd like to pause here and try it on your own, you're welcome to. There are four bags and in each of the bags there were zero cereal bars. So our multiplication equation is four times zero, which gives us the total amount of cereal bars of zero. When we look and see how many cereal bars are found here, there are zero. Part B, what multiplication equation can you write to show five lunch bags with zero cereal bars in each bag? Okay, again, you can pause and try this on your own and then come back. There are five lunch bags, and in each lunch bag, there are zero cereal bars. So when we 
If we added another lunch bag here and it didn't have a cereal bar inside it, there would be a total of zero cereal bars. Part C, what multiplication equation can you write to show six lunch bags with zero cereal bar bars in each bag? Again, pause if you'd like. There are six lunch bags and inside each lunch bag, there were, were zero cereal bars. So again, that's like we're adding another bag up here and there aren't any other cereal bars being added. So our total number of cereal bars would be zero. Part D, when you multiply with zero, what pattern do you see? I'm guessing you're noticing that when we have a number multiplied by zero, we are going to get the answer zero. No matter what the factor is, five times zero gave us zero. So whatever our factor is that multiplies with zero, we're always going to get the answer zero. So the explanation would be that when one of the factors is zero, the product is zero. You'll notice that the connective vocabulary has some information here about the zero property of multiplication, which states that the product of zero and any number is zero. And they give an example of zero times four, which is zero, which we have up here, and three times zero, which is zero. Remember that you can always go back and rewatch this video and pause along the way at any time as needed.